Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Technical Intercepts. In this video, we will see how this feedback will change the parameters of basic amplifier like gain, bandwidth, input and output impedances, etc. And are these changes are good or not good? Let's see about it. Before going into that, let's have a quick look on the block diagram of feedback amplifier. Can you see the basic amplifier block here? It is just a simple transistor without feedback which performs amplification. Another block, a signal source from where original signal comes from. A feedback network also called attenuator which presses the feedback signals. And the two most important blocks, a mixer and a sampler. Let's see about them here. In sampling network, we only take a part of output signal from basic amplifier and we feed that signal back to the basic amplifier through feedback network. We do not completely digitize the output of basic amplifier. We only take a part of it. And this is done in two ways. One is a shunt sampling and the other is series sampling. This method is specific to the type of the output signal from basic amplifier if the output signal is voltage then it is shunt sampling and if the output signal of basic amplifier is current then it is series or loop sampling in mixer network the original signal from source and the output signal or feedback network are combined and this mixing is done in two ways one is shunt mixing and the other is node mixing and these ways are specific to the type of signal coming from the feedback network. If the signal coming from feedback network is current then it is shunt mixing and if the signal coming from feedback network is voltage then it is series mixing. Depending upon the type of output coming from the basic amplifier and the output from the feedback network we have four types of amplifiers number one if the output from the basic amplifier and the feedback network is voltage then it is voltage amplifier also called voltage series or series shunt number two if the output from the basic amplifier and the feedback network is current then it is called current amplifier also called current shunt or shunt series if the output from the basic amplifier or a sampler is in the form of voltage and from the feedback network is in the form of current then it is called trans resistance amplifier also called voltage shunt amplifier also called as shunt shunt amplifier number four if the output from the basic amplifier or sampler is in the form of current and the output from the feedback network is in the form of voltage then it is called trans conductance amplifier or current series amplifier or series series amplifier The gain with feedback ACL is always less than the gain without feedback AOL of a basic amplifier by a factor 1 plus AOL beta and this happens because of the negative injection of a feedback signal XF into the basic amplifier and the ACL is always dependent upon a beta which is a feedback ratio that is XF by X0 and as the beta increases ACL decreases. If ACL is less than AOL, then it is a degenerative feedback, a negative feedback. If ACL is greater than AOL, then it is a regenerative feedback, a positive feedback. A low gain is the product of the gains of a mixer, a basic amplifier and a feedback network when you traversed a path or a loop from a mixer through a basic amplifier through a feedback network and again to a mixer it is equals to minus 1 into AOL into beta it is also called as return ratio
A written difference is the difference between a unity and the loop gap or written ratio. D is equal to 1 plus AOL beta. And the uh, feedback introduced in amplifier is always expressed in decibels. Represented by N, N is positive for positive feedback and negative for negative feedback. Bandwidth with feedback. To do this, you first need to know what happens to the cutoff frequencies both higher and lower after feedback. The higher cutoff frequency will increase by a factor 1 plus A mid beta after feedback when compared to the higher cutoff frequency without feedback, where A mid is the midpoint uh, gain calculated at the midpoint frequency of both higher and lower before to feedback which means the high frequency response of basic amplifier after negative feedback is improved and that means a basic amplifier now can process even more higher frequencies similarly the lower cutoff frequency after feedback decreases by factor 1 plus a mid beta when compared to the lower cutoff frequency before to feedback that means the low frequency response of basic amplifier after negative feedback is improved and which means a basic amplifier now can process even more less frequencies and the resultant is the range of bandwidth after feedback increases by a factor 1 plus a mid beta when compared to bandwidth without feedback. This is the graph of bandwidth with the feedback and its range is increased. Can you see the cutoff frequencies? Lower shifted to more lower and higher shifted to more higher. Transfer gain of basic amplifier AOL is not constant as it depends upon the parameters like operating point and temperature. This lack of stability of basic amplifier can be reduced with a negative feedback. By doing negative feedback, we can increase the stability of basic amplifier as its sensitivity towards a little changes or fractional changes in amplification can be reduced. Sensitivity is the reciprocal of desensitivity and it is the ratio of the fractional change of amplification with feedback to the fractional change of amplification without feedback. So, by looking at the equation of desensitivity, we can say that the change in gain with the feedback is less than the change in gain without feedback by a factor 1 plus AOL beta and the stability of feedback amplifier always increases whenever its desensitivity increases or whenever its sensitivity towards any change in its operating point or temperature is less which means the sensitivity of a feedback amplifier is less towards any change when compared to the sensitivity of amplifier without feedback. If beta AOL is made very greater than 1, then closed loop gain of feedback amplifier is independent of open loop gain, which means the amplifier is stabilized. If the feedback network is not made of reactive elements like capacitor and inductor which are frequency signal processing elements, then the overall gain of feedback amplifier will be independent of frequency. By doing so, the phase and frequency distortions of feedback amplifier can be substantially reduced. But sometimes, this feedback network is made of reactive elements that is C and L for tuned amplification because beta depends on frequency if it is made of C and L and then gain will be depend on frequency and for tuned amplification as beta tends to zero and uh, beta tends to infinity uh, the gain will be high at those frequencies rejecting all other frequency. reduce noise and non-linear distortions. 
noise is something like uh, interferences and uh, non-linear distortions are some extra frequencies or some extra signals we observe at output signal when we don't have them at input signal resistance of a feedback amplifier in a series or loop mixing will be increases because of the feedback voltage this feedback voltage will oppose the source voltage and hence the current will get down and because of that the input resistance increases whereas in a shunt or a node mixing this uh, feedback current will be added to the source current and because of the increase in current the resistance will get down that is the input resistance in shunt mixing of a feedback amplifier will be decreases the output resistance of a feedback amplifier will depends upon the connection between the sampler and the feedback network if the connection between sampler and feedback network is shunt then the output resistance decreases because of the resistance of sampler and the resistance of feedback network is parallel and you know that resistance in parallel decreases whereas if the connection between the sampler and the feedback network is in series then the output resistance increases because the resistance of sampler and the resistance of feedback network are in series and the resistance will adds up in series and that is why the output resistance increases voltage amplifier also called voltage series amplifier also called series shunt amplifier because the output signal here is voltage and the input signal of this amplifier is also voltage since the connection at the output between sampler and feedback network is parallel the output resistance of a voltage amplifier decreases because the resistance in parallel decreases since the connection between the mixer and feedback network at the input is series the input resistance of voltage amplifier increases because the resistance in series will increases that is the resistance in series will adds up and the output resistance of uh, current amplifier also called current shunt amplifier also called shunt series amplifier in this we do a series connection between a sampler and a feedback network at the output and a parallel connection between a mixer and a feedback network at the input the output signal is also current and the input signal is also current since we are doing a series connection at the output the resistance of the current amplifier at the output increases since we are doing a parallel connection at the input the input resistance of a current amplifier decreases because the resistance in parallel decreases and the resistance in series increases let us see the input and the output resistances of a uh, transconductance amplifier also called the current series amplifier also called series series amplifier here the output signal is current and the input signal is voltage since we are doing a series connection between a sampler and a feedback network at the output and again a series connection between mixer and a feedback network at the input the input and output resistances of a transconductance amplifier will increases because resistances in series will increase and the output 
uh, sample resistance and uh, feedback uh, network resistance will have and at the input mixer resistance and feedback network resistance will add let us see the input and the output resistance of trans resistance amplifier also called voltage shunt amplifier also called shunt shunt amplifier here the output signal is voltage and the input signal is current we do a parallel connection between sampler and the feedback network at the output and we also do the same parallel connection between mixer and a feedback network at the input since we are doing parallel connections both at the output and also at the input the input and output resistances of trans resistance amplifier will decrease because the resistance in parallel will decrease. We have seen so many advantages happens when a negative feedback is done to a basic amplifier with only a single disadvantage and that disadvantage is reduction in closed loop gain by a factor of 1 plus A or L beta. But this disadvantage can be compromised with the same increase in bandwidth with a factor 1 plus A or L beta. That is again bandwidth product after feedback is equals to the gain bandwidth product without feedback. That's a trade-off. We have achieved a compromise between or a trade-off between two desirable but incompatible features of basic amplifier. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and bye-bye.